what if we could get agent mode in Visual Studio Code to reach out of the editor and into the physical world to communicate with us when it's done working? I don't know, something like maybe changing the color of this light bulb behind me. With MCP, we can do that. And in this video, I'm going to show you how. Let's go. So what we're going to do here is work with this little bulb called the LIFX. And I have the old one. This is the newer one. Looks like one of them runs about 30 bucks on Amazon. I'll put a link in the video description. It's probably an affiliate link just in the interest of full disclosure. And the reason why we're using this bulb is because the API is wide open. Let me show you. So LIFX has this really wide open API. And by wide open, I mean the authentication is quite simple. So you go into account settings here, and then you need to create a new token. And then once you create that token here, let's just do it and we'll call this uh, a test here. And then once you do that, you actually get an API key. And then once you have the API key, you can start calling the API with just the key. So for instance, let's go ahead and list all of the lights that I have. So I'm gonna use the selector all for just all lights, and then it will just list out all the lights I have. And you can see all I had to do is provide my key right there, and it just works. And so the one we wanna work with has a label of lamp, and that's important. And so let's go back here to set state, and in this case, let's set the state of the light. And the reason why the label is important because we now need to use that. So we can say label, lamp, label colon lamp, and then we can change the color. So what's the color right now? It's blue. So let's change it to red, a very obvious change, and then just click the button and our lamp's red. And it's as easy as that. And so all we're gonna do is create an MCP server that calls this API. So let's get at it. All right, I'm starting off with a completely empty directory here. It's just an empty folder called MCP LIFX. There's no files in it. And I'm gonna start here with agent mode and I'm gonna to go to use GPT-4.1. And I'm gonna do this for speed and because I'm being very specific, which 4.1 is great at. So here's what I wanna do. I wanna grab the URL to the LIFX API docs right here, right? So if we go to uh, the introduction here, that's probably a good page to grab. Let's just grab this. And then I'm gonna come back and I am going to have the agent basically scrape the docs. And here's how I'm gonna do that. I'm going to pass in the URL and then I give it some instructions here. And I'm just going to say, take a look at the web page for this URL and make a markdown table that contains all of the API endpoints as well as the link to get to that specific API endpoint page. Now, while this is doing its thing, because what it's going to do is it's going to go out, it's going to call that API, it's going to fetch it, and this is built into VS Code, and it's going to create a markdown table with a list of links to each endpoint. Now, the reason why we have this table of links is because each one of these pages is a different link. And so we need to go out and crawl each one of these pages in the docs to build up a knowledge base for VS Code. So we can do that here now that we have the markdown table is created and each one of these represents a different page. So then we'll just tell it to iterate over that. Excellent. Can you now please iterate over each one of these pages and create a file called lifx.md, which contains a list of all of the API endpoints how you call those endpoints, the path to those endpoints, the HTTP methods for those endpoints, and any parameters and whether or not they're required. All right, and then we'll let the agent go out and do its thing. Now what it should do here is iterate over the table that it just created to go out and search each one of those pages, as you can see it's doing. And then what it's gonna do is create a final document that tells us how exactly we can call each one of these endpoints, exactly what parameters it's going to need. And we're gonna use that to inform the agent about how the LIFX API works so that it's instantly an expert in this API. Watch. All right, so I sped that up, but you can see here is a list of all of the different methods along with how to call them. So here's the path. Here's the method, the description, the parameters, and it created this markdown file on its own by fetching each one of these pages. And so it's created a knowledge base about the API for us. Now, the next step here is for us to teach Visual Studio Code and agent mode how to create an MCP server. So how do we do that? This right here 
is the official documentation for the model context protocol. And if we go to quick start and for server developers, because that's what we're building is a server, we actually have a quick start here. And you can see that they've sort of anticipated that LLMs will be using this. And so we can actually just copy the page just by clicking copy here. And then back in Visual Studio Code, we can create a new file here. So let's create a new file and we could just paste this in and we'll save this as, in this case, we'll call this uh, mcp.md. All right, so now we've got two markdown files, one that tells the agent how to use the LIFX API and the other that tells the agent how to create an MCP server. And with that, we have enough context to actually build this thing. But before we do that, we want to initialize a Git repository here and go ahead and commit the files that we do have. And you'll watch me do this a lot as we go forward because it's really important to keep clear and commit. And you'll understand what that means here in just a moment. So let's go ahead and commit and we'll publish this repo. All right, and now we're ready to build. So now we're gonna move to Claude Sonnet 4. And the reason why we're moving to Claude is because we're in agent mode. It's gonna to need to take a lot of different steps. And I just find that Claude is better at that. So let's do it. Let's just say, let's build an MCP server for the LIFX API. And then we're gonna give it our LIFX API document here. And we're going to give it the MCP markdown file that we created. And then we're going to tell it to use Node because there's many different languages that you can use to create an MCP server. That's it. We're just going to send it and see what we get back. Here we go. Okay, it's done. Uh, a lot happened there. I sped it up, but essentially what happened was that it ran into some TypeScript errors, tried to fix those, ended up adjusting the TypeScript configuration file to handle that. And then there's a couple other important things that happened here. So one of them is that, you, so you can see it, it tried to run it and it ran it successfully and it's now running on standard IO. This is important because we're gonna use this later, this configuration. So let's go ahead and stop this at this moment and we'll go ahead and delete these copilot terminal sessions here. Now, the other thing that it did was that it created a readme file that tells how to use this, which is really nice. We didn't even ask for that documentation. And then another thing I wanna show you here is this memory.md. Now, what this is, this is a pro tip that you can use, is I have a custom instruction that gives Claude a memory because LLMs don't have memories. And the way that I do this is in my custom instructions here, my user settings JSON, you can see that I actually have up here in my custom instructions right here. It says you have a memory, here's where it's located and you can read and write to this memory. You can also delete from it. If the file doesn't exist, you can create it and it just sort of gives it some context. So if it has to pick up where it left off with a new chat, it can use this file to do so. So you can see here, it's kind of logged what it did the endpoints it created, the key features it implemented, the files it created, and then what next steps there are for the project. This is really nice. You can use this to create a memory for the AI in VS Code. So now what we wanna do is we wanna keep all of the files that we've got here. We wanna clear the chat, keep clear. And what was the third thing? Commit, right? So we have a few files here, 1,944, and that's because we do need a git ignore file. So we can just create that ourselves. And we'll just call that git ignore. And then inside of that, we just want to ignore the node modules, which is taking up the preponderance of these files here. So if we come back over, we will have many less files now. So there you go. Now you can see we just have 10. So let's go ahead and add those. And actually, we don't need this env.example here. We'll be passing that key in ourselves. We'll commit the memory. That's fine. And then we'll go ahead and click the sparkles here to get a commit message, which is super convenient here. And you can see initialize LIFX MCP server looks great. So let's go ahead and commit this. And then uh, this last one here, we'll just get rid of this file because we don't actually need this. And then synchronize our changes. Remember, keep clear and commit. Okay, so now we're actually ready to use this thing. 
how do we do that? So there's a couple of different ways to do this in Visual Studio Code. The one that I like to use is by creating an MCP configuration file for the project here, which defines any servers used by this project. So to do that, we can create a new file. And in our new file, what we want to do is just save this as MCP dot JSON. And instead of in the docs directory, we want this to be in the VS code directory. So we'll go ahead and create that. And then it shows up here and you can see it's the right file because we have this little add server green button. So let's go ahead and click that. And it wants to know, okay, well, what sort of server is this? And if you remember, it's a standard IO. So let's pick that. And then what command are we going to run? This is going to run with node. And then it just kind of wants a name here and we can just call it LIFX. Now, when we do that, we actually get the server configuration, but this isn't quite enough to actually do this. Uh, and so what we need to do is pass in an environment variable here as well, and also the path to the file that we want to execute. And we want to do that in the args. So the, the file we actually want to execute is this index file here. So we can copy the path and just paste this in. And all this does is it tells the MCP server, use node and execute this file. That's all we're doing here. And then we need to pass in the LIFX token as an environment variable. So we have those here in ENV. And then in that ENV, we're going to have an LIFX token. So it's just called LIFX token is the way that it's referenced in the server. And then our token is gonna go there. Now there's one other thing that we want to do here, which is we don't actually want to put our token in clear text here. And so Visual Studio Code has a mechanism for hiding this and that's called inputs. So in our inputs here, and actually inputs is an array. So in our inputs array, what we're going to do is we're going to define an input for this specific LIFX key. So the type is going to be prompt string the uh, ID here, so let's get the ID here, is going to be the LIFX token. That's completely fine. LIFX token, that'll be fine. And then uh, we're going to need a description for that thing. So the description here will just say enter your LIFX API token. And then the last one is password is true. And this is what actually encrypts it so that you can't actually see it. And so this is what it looks like once we've finished our configuration and then we need to add a comma here that is correct. So now what we want to do is actually pass this input in. And the way that we're going to do that is dollar sign input, right? Input. And then it's going to be the name of the input, which is LIFX token, just like this. All right. Now that we've done this, we can start the server and it should show up in VS Code as a tool that we can use. So let's click start. And when we do that, you can see it prompts us for our token. We'll go ahead and press enter there. And then you can see it's running and it's discovered 10 tools. So how do we use those? Well, if we go over to agent mode and we look at our tools, we can see all the different ones we have. And here's LIFX and it's running. And you can see it's coming from our local MCP JSON file here. So now what we should be able to do in theory is say something like this, change the color of my lamp to blue. Now I'm not giving it any additional information about how to call it, what tool to call, just lamp, which is the selector we used earlier. Let's see if this works. So we'll go ahead and pass that in. You can see that it's gonna go ahead and try to call list lights to determine what lights I have. So we'll select continue. And it looks like we have this token wrong. So we actually need to change the uh, name of this. So let's do that here. So this is good. We're catching errors as we go. So the name of this thing is actually different. It is this right here. And now we can restart or start rather and go back and let's just try that again. And we can do that by, let's go ahead and stop this, just refreshing. So let's go ahead and try it again, see if it gets it right this time. So it's going to read its memory and list the available lights. So let's go ahead and click continue here. All right. And this time that succeeded and we can actually see what it came back with. Right. So here's all my different lights. And then the next thing it's going to do is it's going to try to change the color. Great. So it's going to change it to blue and I'm just going to say always allow. So I don't have to click, keep clicking continue and let's see if this works. And there it is. And now the agent can control the lamp with an MCP server. That's crazy. It's going to update its memory here, which is fine. We'll go ahead and 
uh, stop this because we just are testing the server. So now we can put in a custom instruction that says something like this. Let's go to user settings and in our custom instructions, we can come here and we can just say text, um, always change the color of my light bulb when you are finished with a task, All right? And to test this and make sure this actually works, let's try it out. So let's go ahead and start a new chat session. And we're going to say, think for a minute about something and then tell me when you are done. So we're sort of simulating a task here. We're not actually doing anything. We're just telling it to think. So it's thinking about my workspace. And then when it's finished, it should go ahead and change the color of the light bulb as I requested from our custom instruction. Now that I'm done thinking, set the light state and it changed it to green. That's pretty incredible. And that's how easy it is to create an MCP server for just about anything using agent mode in Visual Studio Code. So the question is, if all you need is an API and the instructions on how to create an MCP server, what will you create? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. And as always, happy coding.